Shorty fat, slim thick. She might drug, she might fix. And I'm all up in her mix. She be mixing. Hi, lovies. Welcome back to today's video. I've got a very special documentary to react to today because it is the remembrance of Triple X. It is the anniversary of his death. So I figured it's only fitting to release this documentary reaction today. This is a long one, it's almost two hours. So if you guys see clips that are edited out or it's split into two parts, just because editing would have been a nightmare. But I'm gonna try to get through all of it and worst comes worse, I'll just cut out some parts. But yeah, without further ado guys, we're gonna get into it. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for engagement. Like always, please leave any recommendations you have down below. I'm catching up, okay? Like after this documentary today, you guys starting tomorrow, we'll be seeing all of your requests, okay? So don't worry, I've been going through copyright and all of the ish, so. They're coming to you guys and let's just get into it, y'all. All right, loves. Trigger warning. That's what this is, essentially. Okay, guys. So here is my first vlog. Today, I am basically going to tell you guys about myself. Because I've never really let you in much. And I feel like that's the best thing to do right now. To ideally strengthen the bond. So here's my room. Uh, here's Stitch. This is my favorite Disney character ever. He's very relatable. Okay. So... Today, I am basically going to be telling you guys about myself. Uh, currently, I'm in a huge state of paranoia, um, just due to my, my past and just the things and the people I've associated myself with previously. I've tried to put myself in a position to ideally be able to motivate others to I mean, for myself to suffice when it comes to this negative shit, cause like, bro, this shit, it's like trying to consume me. It's almost like it's, like it's trying to get inside of my mind, you know? I apologize for being so distant. I've been paranoid, I've been needing help and I haven't been getting the ideal help uh, I really want. That is so sad for him to be expressing that he needs help and he's actively looking for help and help is just not there. It's so sad. We don't want to have a fight. Hey, unfortunately, they won't let me jump off. But listen, I'm going to find a way to compromise. He was moving like he was on a mission. I remember being at these shows and watching how much he controlled the stage, watched how commanding his voice, actions were, like he was a natural leader. I'm gonna count down to three. When I say, y'all motherfuckers jump. I always felt like people use the term rapper to describe him mostly because he was black. But he never, he was never a rapper. He could rap, but I don't think that means you're a rapper. so many different things with rock and R&B and hip hop. And I'm like, yo, how did the kid that made that made this? He figured out a way to create X. And he found ways to get attention to himself. And even though it was negative things, it worked. For him to do all the things that he's done in two years, it was incredible. You know, that's the main reason why we're all so hurt. 
Everybody was so excited to see this next step in the transformation that we never got to see. The rapper XXX Tentacion has been shot apparently. XXX Tentacion, a rising star here in South Florida. Police say the artist, whose real name is Jose Onfroy, was leaving a Broward County motorcycle shop yesterday when he was shot by two men who ran up to his car. The deep connection that his fans have with his music, that's a fact, that's a real thing. His music obviously means so much to so many. X's music saved my life. For three years, it's helped. One thing, guys, like side note that I really hate, because I remember, what, this was six years ago? I remember when this happened and I thought it was like so disrespectful to see them post him in the car, like videos, you know what I mean? Like not only disrespectful to him and just like his state, you know what I mean? Like him not being here anymore and like, I don't know, I feel like there's just some weird, you just sh shouldn't do that. But also the fact that like his mom and his family and the people closest to him had to see that, you know? Like, I don't know, like it just, it rubbed me the wrong way. I, I don't know if they're gonna get into that on here, but I do remember like back then how weird I thought it just, it was just weird. This dude helped me get through depression and a bunch of stuff, man. Long live X! Long live X! Long live X! But the thing about his fame and commercial success, it started with this horrific alleged crime. 15-year-olds will in some ways idolize him, and he was an incredible talent. He should not be anyone's idol. Show some respect and leave it alone. You know, not make a mockery of a man's life and death. The internet is a place for just a big conversation. He was the topic of the conversation anytime he did anything. You know, there's been a lot of fucking pressure in the media and shit to, to not fuck with this dude. And I also just want to say fuck anybody who's disrespected him after his death. I do think he was changing. Like, I feel like, like, how are you going to say he shouldn't be anyone's idol? Like, I feel like that's, that's a reach. You know what I mean? Because obviously, like, I feel like idol isn't even the right word for X because so many people who listened to him felt like they had such a personal connection with him through his music. So, like, he's more than an idol, you know? Like, ugh, I, I don't like the way that was said. It's just that he left behind. Like, I get, obviously, his decisions. I'm sorry for pausing, y'all. I'm sorry, but this is a long video. If I don't talk through parts of it, it is going to be copyrighted to oblivion. Um, but I don't know. I just think, like, you cannot, what is the word? It is okay to look at somebody and be inspired by them and to idolize them without necessarily wanting to take all of the same steps they did or, you know, participate in the same activities. You know what I mean? So I feel like for that guy to say that like, nobody should be idolizing him, I feel like that's, mm. Eh, I feel like he had such a human side of him and there was a very emotional and just raw part of him that we needed in music because it allowed a lot of people to connect in a way that they hadn't before. And the things that hurt others and himself. We just knew violent cells and it's the it's a type of energy that we were tapping into to sell shit, you know what I mean? And that's basically what we used it as. Like, 
his face he has such a like pretty boy face but it works You got me nice lighting, so I can look pretty. Uh, yeah, ashy. You uh, getting more popular? A big debate that you've sparked, if you've read a lot of stuff about you, I don't know if you have or not, is whether or not you can separate art from an artist, right? In my situation, they definitely should pay attention to what I am as a person rather than a character. Mm -hmm. But it is hard to mend these two things together if everything that I portray as an artist is purely art. So it's hard to tell if as a person that anything that is controversial or spoken on about me is remotely even true. You never know who you're fucking with unless you fully dwell into them as a person. So I definitely think it is very, very important to understand who you are fucking with and who you're listening to. Yes, I do. So why did you decide to make this documentary? I decided to make this documentary because I felt like my son's story needed to be told. I was in labor for 24 hours. He came out super light skin, oh. gray eyes, and I was like, oh my God, where did you come from? <laughs> and he was my little Tweety Bird. He was small. He looks so much like his mom. Oh my gosh. He was a beautiful baby. And cute and yellow. He was just a calm, beautiful baby. A very serious kid. It was as if he was an old soul. I knew Jackson was special. The name Jackson came from Mark Martin. Who we would call God, we as Rockefellers would say Ja. So Ja is God. Look at him, even as a child, he just had that presence. I think he, okay, not even just because this is X. He was one of the cutest babies I have seen in a long time. God said, from the mouth of God. And I made him jump in. Jesse's dad would come sometimes, pick him up on the weekends. We would share him during holidays or summers and whatnot. He just didn't help us financially. Mm. I was 17 when I had him. In my case, I didn't have any support, so it's just me paying rent, paying all the bills, and having to work. And so Jesse was always with a babysitter or at daycare. I would make sure that he had the best of everything, for sure. I would say he was extremely spoiled, but I think he always felt alone. His father loved him, and he was present until he couldn't be. He got arrested after Jasse turned 10, and he got 10 years in prison. He hasn't physically saw him in person um, since then. When I was growing up, my mom tried to give me love by financially taking care of me because she seen that as the most important thing. As long as I ate, and as long as I had clothes, and as long as I had a place to stay, that was the most important thing to her. She was never able to emotionally nurture me, so that left some sort of self-hate for myself because I felt like I wasn't enough, you know, for a certain amount of time. There was like a shift in his behavior, a shift in his personality. At the age of 10, he just started wilding out. He would like act up in school, you know, class disruption, fights a lot. I stayed on him 24 seven and we would bump heads and we did not get along. When he was 13, we got him evaluated and they told me that he was bipolar. They wanted me to put him on medication and I refused because where I'm from, we don't label kids. And I don't really believe in, you know, dosing kids up with drugs or anything like that. I would prefer going through counseling and trying to get to the root of the problem. And we did that. 
It just got really, really bad. He was able to get kicked out of every school in our district, which is why he ended up living with my mom. Go and take the picture what I can do. Take the picture. You pay so much, man. My mom, she lives like right across the street from the hood. And he just made his way over there. And he enjoyed it. He started skipping school. At the time, he would always say, I want to be a rapper. And so as an incentive, I offered to, you don't have to get straight A's. Just stay in school, don't get in any problems. And I would have him go to the studio on the weekends. What a mom. Oh my gosh. Like, I know, obviously, um, you know, she wasn't perfect, but I think it's so hard. I can't only imagine being a single mom. I came from a two parent household and I feel very blessed for that. And even then, it was difficult. So I can only imagine, like, carrying that weight and having to financially support your child, you know? Like, I'm not saying it's an excuse for her to be emotionally absent, but at the same time, like, you're doing the best you can with what you've got, you know? And I think for her to support his dreams at such an early age, that's amazing. Because I feel like you see so many parents, especially with like rappers and things like that, where their parents, you know, would want them to do anything but that, you know? So for her to see that in him and help him fulfill those dreams so early on, all respect to her. The corruption that went from something to nothing Put his hands on his mother and now he's fucking his cousin Now she's happy I remember him making his like first song at like 14 And we were like, yo Like we didn't expect that at all It was it was like almost like he was telling a whole story That was like the first time we heard him like curse too It was very inappropriate But I was like, all right You got something All my life I dream these things Seems surreal that I see these things Until I D.I.E. All you niggas just P.I.E. Nah, nigga can't sleep on me. I kept up my end of the bargain until it didn't work anymore. He was caught up in a few home invasions. He was caught selling drugs. He was caught with a gun. He had all types of charges. Rolling? Yeah, I'm just gonna roll. Right. Hi, my name is XXX. My name is Ski Mask, the slump. God, I have, <laughs> I have a skinny dick. I don't know and... what you're talking about. Hey, pussy nigga, no, don't fuck dog. Hey, lay nigga, better know his luck up. Hey, pussy nigga, no, he fucked up. Lay nigga, better know. Honestly, I didn't know what to make of Jose at first. I met him in juvenile jail. I was at least 16. I think he was younger than me at the time. He told me his charges. And I was like, this nigga's in here for armed robbery? <laughs> uh, for, for home invasion? So I'm like, OK. What really connected us was we would be beatbox, like making beats on the table, on the chairs and shit. And we would just be freestyling. Yes, a little of better, you said it would be cast in half, but I'll leave him half alive in a basket. And if you're not a savage, come to the madness. We would just like feed off of each other. We both were the big brother and little brother at the same time to each other. We didn't even know what we wanted to do at the time. We just know we wanted to make a stand for who we are and just be ourselves, say fuck it, like no matter the consequences. At that point, we were like, we don't really want a job. And if we need a job and the job doesn't want us because we have face tats, then that's not the job we would really want for ourselves or some shit. Like, fuck it, we're, this is what we're doing. Real piece of shit. Dirty piece of shit. Dirty. Back then, we were stealing shit, well, I was. Uh, I was stealing cough syrup and selling it. And we were just having a lot of jugs, really, back then. And we found a lot of ways to make money, but because our parents wasn't helping us with nothing, really, because they just thought we were fucking horrible kids at the time. I remember Cleo's mom picking me and Jose up one day, and this is the first time I meet the lady. And she says, why are you hanging out with him? He's a bad kid. <laughs> this is what she tells me. He's a bad kid. Why are you, why are you chilling with this boy? <laughs> I feel like a lot of times Jose did feel like even his family didn't really like him at that point. He didn't understand how his family treated him. Like he was just this bad child. But if you think in Ja's mind back then, Ja didn't think that he was just this bad child trying to rebel. Ja thinks he's just being Ja. You know what I mean? Like I'm just being me and niggas hate me. And I hate myself because niggas hate me and I need to change myself basically. 
I've seen him literally choose to sleep on the streets more times than go home. He didn't explain it to me all the time, but I just knew he even felt better sleeping with me in the car. When Imagine having a friendship like that, like where even now, I don't know, oh, oh, that hurts my heart. Cause like, you can just tell like it was really a brotherhood. And to have a friend who understands your, your mental space and how you perceive the world and, and the things that you're going through more than your own family does, like in a way they become like their own little separate family, you know? Like, I didn't even know who Ski Mask was until you guys started recommending his songs. He left home, he left home, nobody kicked him out. And it was as a result of him not wanting to follow the rules or not follow curfew or just doing whatever he wanted to do. And then he just stopped going to school. He just was like, yo, I'm good. I don't even know why we wanted a group at the time, but I was like, nah, we gotta make a group of some kind. And I was like, very rare. And me and Ja rolled that shit out till the wheels fell off. And then um, out of nowhere, Ja wanted to make his own group too. And that was members only. Ja used to always be like, I'm about to start this shit called members only, bro. There was really no like planned creation. It was kind of just like a manifestation type of thing for him, you know? And it was kind of like a brotherhood. Mostly everybody would come to my house. Uh, we had a backyard, and we would just like, sit by there and smoke and write lyrics and listen to Mad Instrumentals, slap, slap box. Ja ordered a snowball microphone, like one of the cheapest microphones you could get, and we just started recording on it. We were recording in bedrooms. My friend's bedroom, friend's closet. It doesn't matter what it was. He would pull that little thing out with the three prongs, and we would just record that shit. And that's why our music came with distortion, because the type of mic that we were using, but we would use it to our advantage, really. It was like the SoundCloud era of rap. We didn't know what we was doing. People loved the first song that John. Members only! Members only in this bitch! <laughs> What really had us notice, what really like rang bells where we're from, was the shows. Ja always had this aura about him that he was not gonna let us not. He always had a huge crowd of people around him, and then everybody looking at it like, what the fuck is this, or who is he? No, real shit. I appreciate all y'all for coming out here. Even if you didn't come out here for me, man, for all the support, all y'all, man. He had a way of making people feel wanted, needed, important, and that's what would gravitate them towards him. He was so comfortable showing his vulnerability. It kind of made kids relate to him. They reach out to him and say, bro, you saved my life. I'm sorry, I'm still stuck on that point, but like he had a relationship with his fans. Like, I don't even like to call them fans because it really was like, I don't even feel like X looked at them as fans. It was like one huge family. And like, I don't know, I feel like it says something about his character, how like even in his shows, he just wanted to be surrounded by people, but it like wasn't for cloud or things like that. I feel like he just really enjoyed that sense of community because it was what he was lacking at home. The more I got into that creative process, 
and really being imaginative and really thoroughly like studying the dictionary and the source and then I really started liking making music and then I started using it to kind of cope and as an antidepressant I found a new comfortability within myself when I recorded music. Bad. All right, it's working, I guess. Hi, right, you guys. Let's wait till we get more people. Damn. Damn, bro, it's already 100. Jesus Christ. Already 200. Jesus Christ. All right, I fuck with y'all. Y'all out here going hard. I left my DMs open. That's what nobody realizes. My DMs are open so people can talk to me because I really like to, like, talk to my fans. I don't like to just be an ignorant asshole and act like nobody's there, you know? That's why, like, when I, when I get depressed... I realize that I have you guys and it just, it motivates me to be a different person. It motivates me to not be so fucking down, you know? Like, look at this, there's, we have over, we've had all, over a thousand people in here and like, I'm just one person, you know? So to show, to have that many people supporting me, you, you not know how awesome that feels, that's fucking awesome. A lot of people know me as Bruno Dickums. I've been a porn star for about 12 years. I created my own website. You gotta show us some skin, baby, skin to win. We shot reality type porn. I followed around artists in the underground scene. Me meeting a lot of artists, you know, I decided that I wanted to manage some of these artists because I saw a lot of potential. You know, I was going to a lot of the shows and there was one guy that was starting to make a little noise in South Florida. I didn't know who he was. And everybody around me is like, it's the kid we're telling you about, X, you know? He's like coming up in the scene. We weren't on the level that he was on. It was him and Ski on a particular level, and it was our job to help that grow and formulate. He started off by networking with artists that was already running the South Florida underground scene. Wi-Fi was one of those people that already was up there. Rob was another one. He was already up there. Denzel. I just saw his energy, like, it's hard to explain, like, just his presence. Like, he could make noise in the room and not even speak. These kids, man, they looked like they were ready to die for job. He was already X, 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 not thus, you know? The way he got that name, he came up with that name was his, uh, you know, infatuation with porn. So once he heard, oh, there's this porn star that shoots porn with underground artists, he's like, oh, this is the guy I got to meet. So I think he was living with his grandma. And he started coming over more than he was supposed to. <laughs> so, so I was like, you come in here a lot. And, and I wake up in the morning, he sleep on the couch. I'm like, hey, man, you, you don't live here. Like, mm -hmm. he's like, bro, where I'm at, man, I'm going crazy. Like, I need to, I need to be somewhere else. Like, please let me move in. I was like, All right, I'll officially be your manager. You can move in. When I started managing Ski too. When he was able to stay at Bruno's, I think he was able to hone in on his artistry, like the screamo type distorted beat. No one was delivering like him, you feel me? But this is like one of the first times we've seen Ja yell at the mic. The porn girls in the house was going in here like, what the fuck is wrong with this nigga, dog? We were literally living in a porn house. We would see crazy shit every day. And then the rages at the concerts, like all the energy just mashed. We were living it. I think that's when things started picking up for him because he started making better songs because he was able to jump into that character, if you know what I mean. And on top of that, he was doing a lot of shit. Like, he was beating niggas up on camera and shit. <laughs> hey, Periscope. So we got a very, 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 very extra interesting story today. So basically, this nigga that owes us some cash pulled up to the crib, and he thinks, like, he thinks we're cool with him. So my manager was letting him kick it in there. But basically, I'm about to just beat this nigga's ass, and you guys get to watch it firsthand. If anybody fucked with X's friends, X is going to deal with it. The kid he beats up in the bathroom was somebody that owed me money. And I told the kid, man, if you can't pay me the $500, we're going to have to fight this out. 
We're gonna have to record this for my website. Are you cool with it? He agreed with it. X pulls up. He's like, where's he at? We need to shoot this scene. I was like, he's in the house, but we're doing this scene tomorrow. So please, cause can we just wait? Cause I know if you go and try to fight him now, it's, we're not, this thing's not gonna happen, you know? Yeah, he didn't listen. Come here, bro. Come here. Honestly, there would be times where I'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? There's is something not right with this guy. That's when people didn't really want to be around Ja, to be complete. That took me so off guard that, oh my, oh my God. Oh my God, over $500, team. Mm. To be honest, a lot of people that was around Ja didn't want to be around Ja before Ja got onto shit. People hated Ja, to be completely real. He was a small dude, but he had a very loud Napoleon complex to him. I was always the person that people would be coming to to calm Jose down. I basically was always the one that looked looked him in the face. I'm just like, I'm here, bro, and I'm, I'm gonna be here for you. And I think I was one of the first people to really do that for him and be show him that I'm gonna love you either way. That's why he really loved me and felt like I was one of his true, really true best friends because no matter what crazy shit Ja did, I had to look him in the eye and hug him and tell him I loved him for him to understand that you're gonna get better. Ja hated himself at one point and, and a lot of points. What do you think the things that he struggled with, like, were, what are some of the things that he struggled with? Uh, emotions. He probably, I feel like he hated his own anger. You know what I mean? And. He was trying to learn how to control that, his emotions, basically, and not let them get the best of him. That was really just his biggest battle himself, really, yeah. It took a series of things for Ja to get the way he was. I mean, Ja used to tell me he used to see his mom get beat up when he was younger or some shit like that, Cleo. His dad tried to put his hands on me a few times. It didn't work out well. I didn't call the cops on him, because where I'm from, that's also taboo. But I hauled ass real quick. I wasn't about to be nobody's, um, you know, my story don't go like that. You know, we're Jamaican, so they're, we're used to ass whoopings. Like, we get our ass beat, like, with hoses and two by fours and you name it. And so it's passed on from generation to generation. I don't know if his dad beating him with anything crazy, but he would he would snuff him and, and he would like beat him if he would tell him to study his timetables, if he would get something wrong. So whenever he would get in problems at school, dad would come give him a whooping, a good one. Um, but he wasn't abusive. I wouldn't say he was abusive or anything like that. We was born into a world that taught us that men have to fight. And this has been going on for thousands of years before we even came here. So if this is the way the world works, our parents, big brothers, big cousins don't want us to be at a disadvantage. So when my big cousins used to be beating my ass mm -hmm. as a kid, they was training me to not get my ass yep. beat as an adult. Same on this end. So at the same time, it's like, it might affect us negatively, personally, but generally, sure. generally, you feel me? Generally, it, it protects us. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like your weapon can also be the same thing that kills you. If you got fear, it's hard to be angry. If you got someone you, that you're scared of in your life, it's real hard to be angry. Dad got locked up when I was like 10. Who was out of fear? My mom. Who was out of fear? Some stranger. I feared nobody. So my anger took control. And whenever anybody would do anything to me, I would act out on it. Fear left, so anger replaced it. Like everything that he did when it came to beef and fighting and popping off, even though it was mental instability there, he would still go in live and he would record it knowing goddamn well this is good for my career. I guess he just knew what they wanted to see and he just took advantage of it just like anybody else would. I would do it 
little things that I knew would get people's attention. This is what people want to see. I said, I know what to market. And, and then I just started marketing bullshit that I knew the kids would like to get them to go on my page. Because obviously I would post shit on my page. And then they would be like, oh, well, this nigga makes music. Let me try it. Let me look and listen to this and see what it's like. And then I would catch you. That's how I would catch you. Josh A would make us make multiple Twitter accounts. 25 people in the chat, and each of those people have at least five different Twitter accounts, and we all retweeting this stuff. Mm -hmm. And we all gonna sit there on Twitter and talk shit to anybody that come under there talking <laughs> shit and just fuck up the Girl. algorithms. That's honestly so smart because, like, I, I about to say, like, the fighting shit and everything, but it's crazy how much of, like, a business mind X had so young what are we at 17 he's not even 18 yet like that's insane the fact that he was already kind of figuring out everything that comes with it because it's not just music right it's the exposure and even if they're like building up small hype through just like a small group of people you know if they're doing that on so many different twitter accounts eventually like i think he's about to talk about how it's just going to fuck the algorithm and that is honestly very freaking smart. My favorite was just like a draw attention. It was all planned out and very strategic. All these people want to see is us destroy each other. That's what that's what they pay for. All controversy. So if you're telling us, if you're paying us to destroy each other, then we will become gladiators. Mm -hmm. What do you expect us to do? Oh, see if they fuck with that soft shit. I dropped like some soft shit. Tell me if y'all fuck with it. He came to my house and he was like, bro, I got something really different, like really different. Like I'm singing, like, I'm like, you ain't singing, bro. <laughs> You used to yelling and screaming on tracks and being angry. And you say, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm like, and he's looking at me and I'm looking at him. I'm like, bruh. You just went from doing this hype rock rap shit to R&B. How did... And after that, I knew he was gonna be great. Once he made that song, I was like, he can do it all now. I don't wanna love myself. I'm praying that you don't love me. There is no definition to my rap. Like, I'm versatile. If you give me the tools to make what the fuck I want, proper all, studio, all the, all proper studio, proper engineering, proper, even the people that that will sit there and take their work very seriously. And like, as far as the production, I'll be the greatest artist that possibly is. Really, literally. The first time I went to one of his shows, I was amazed. There was kids lined up on the side of the stage with their sneakers to get autographs, and I was like, what is this? Is this my child? You know, and it was like a proud moment. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. no. I started noticing that X, you know, was getting in his feelings. He was feeling a little lonely. And him being a hopeless romantic, he's like, I need a girlfriend. It's gonna help me focus. It's gonna help me be creative. Because some of the music he was making was, you know, a lot of that R&B love stuff. So I guess he needed something to actually make it real, make it sound real. I met Jose 2014. I was in high school. I met him like online. Look at this fucking hair. I was supposed to be a mystical ass lion and I ended up being a f She looks like Zendaya. I literally thought that was Zendaya for a second. Oh my gosh. Fuck ass human. What the fuck? At 17, I was basically homeless or home hopping. I was always getting like bullied. I was just always on the laptop basically and trying to like make friends online. I'd go on chat rooms and live through there. Look at what we have here. I would just try to keep myself happy through friends. When Jose and I first met, I had cuts on my thigh, like five lines, and under that I had the word that said alone. And when he noticed it, he was like, why'd you do that? And I was like, because I felt alone. He was like, oh, me too. Like, I feel like we're the same in that aspect. I just felt like I found my significant other, I felt like I found my soulmate. 
I said, I want you to cut alone into my arm. So every time you feel as if you're alone, you think of me and you understand you have someone that feels exactly the same. I was living in a motel. I didn't even have like a pillow. I was just sleeping on an air mattress with my uncle. So he gave me a pillow at his house and gave me a jacket. It's like he didn't want me to feel like I didn't have anything, even if he had to like sacrifice his own thing. I was like, yo, do you like sleeping alone? She said, no. I said, neither do I. I said, I know that you stay in a motel. So how about I go back to the motel with you and I'll sleep in the lobby? She said, are you serious? Would you do that for me? I said, yeah. That shit is so beautiful. Oh my gosh, like, not even just like him cutting alone into his arm, but like the fact that he said, I will sleep in the lobby, like, that is beautiful. There was the only person I had around for a while that I felt relevant to, despite, like, besides my mom. I realized that he had a girlfriend, so I basically fell back and but after those three days, we didn't hang out. We really didn't have contact either. I didn't hear from her for two to three years. When we met up again, I was 19. My best friend at the time, she invited me to a show. We're all tied, waiting to get into the venue. And I see him, <coughs> he had like no shirt on. You know, it was like dark and see me. And he locked eyes with me from across the room. Yeah. And then he like started walking up to me. He just like grabs me by the neck and looks at me like deep in my eyes. I'm like, oh. And he just walks away after that. And then I just look at my friend. I'm like, yeah, I don't know what that was. But it was sexy. <laughs> we started dating after that date, and I moved in with him. He would post me on his Snapchats, and all my friends were hitting me up like, "You date X?" And then he started to, like bringing me around places, and people would notice him, and like they just go crazy for him. I just didn't realize it. I didn't know. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me see how weird you is. It was kind of a romantic feel in the beginning. It was a mesh between like always taking care of each other and trying to better ourselves. She tried to put her fucking finger in my mouth and got a bit in my mouth. Uh -huh. Ow, uh -huh. Stop it. Bite the shit. Fuck that nigga. She sorry. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Sorry as fuck. Sorry as fuck. They stayed in this room most of the time. I barely saw them. But I just saw how the obsession wasn't healthy when i moved in i mean it's like an unhealthy attachment you know like in a lot of ways they were trauma bonded and it's hard because in the same ways that makes their love so beautiful and unique because they understand each other on a deeper level it can also become really toxic when you've built a foundation off of something so negative you know like i feel like it's possible but it's also really hard for that to continue because I feel like eventually that part burns out as you heal, as you're maybe no longer attached to those traumas that you had as a child and the things that connected you no longer connect you in the same ways anymore because you're working through it, you know? Just say I was working at an animal hospital. I was getting paid $10 an hour. That was my first good paying job. Like a week later, he was like, we're not going to drive you back and forth from Fort Lauderdale to North Miami every day. So you're going to have to quit. You're fine anyway. Like, I got you. And then I quit. I understood, like, off the bat, when he cared about something, it was impossible for you to, like, dishear him from that. There was also a lot of miscommunication and jealousy, I'd say. So sorry. You know, I was depressed somewhat when I was with him because I felt like he was like the only person that would give me love and like I wouldn't find that anywhere else. So that's why like I continuously stayed 
It had its good moments and bad moments, but mostly, like, I was lost. I didn't really know, like, what to do about it. He was kind of buzzing at that point. He was making like underground hits, you know what I mean? And then people start peeping like, oh, he might be the next one up, you feel me? But I'm not gonna lie, I think his mind state was very bad at that point. The thing about Jaws, if you weren't that close to him, he didn't really want you to see, like, his true personality sometimes. So he always, you feel me, throwing a little mask or something to try to hide how he's feeling in the moment. So that's how he was treating me at that time. He was trying to be very calm, you feel me? Yo, what's good? How you doing? But he was in a bad mental state, though, I could tell. Yeah. Yeah, this is the first time I'm letting them see my hair. My hair is just a reminder of telling me to to fucking relax. Basically, it's a it's a reminder of me telling myself that yo you you are human and that you are not a god. You are still on the planet Earth and that you need to remind yourself that karma is a real thing and whatever you give out, you will get back. I knew that something was off. The voices in the head came. <clears throat> he would tell me like he would not sleep at night, and he would tell me he hears voices. Literally, you'd be like, oh, I took LSD and I've talked to a spirit that's a demon and told me information about myself, about how long I'm gonna live, that they're gonna come get him at some point. I really didn't like that shit at that point. Yeah, it was a very dark time. And if I end up getting shot and killed for what the fuck I'm doing, or if I end up getting my ass beat at some point in time, or, or nigga, if shit get hard on me, it's because I deserve it. That's point blank, period. Everybody will get a death. Everybody will get a death that is deserving. Everybody will get a life that is deserving. Everybody, you will get what the fuck you deserve, karma. The fact that the first thing he said was if he gets shot. Oh my gosh, y'all were um, actually we are not even close to the halfway point. Just kidding. I was at the time dating Cade Moulton, which was his producer. Jase was about 18 at the time. Jase was not a monster. Like, when I met him, he was very charming, very intelligent, empathetic in a sense. Like, damn near surprised me. The first day I saw Geneva, when she came out, she was wearing a hoodie. She just wasn't making eye contact with anybody. She'd look up and just, like, go back down. She was literally just a shell of a person. Like, there was just no expression. There was nothing. I felt like her soul was empty at the time. One day, Cade cracked a joke in the car. She kind of giggled and laughed. And Jose like, cut his eyes to her and was like, when we get to the house, go in the room. And I was kind of like, the fuck? Kind of just came clear that he was not happy with her laughing at his joke. They went in the rooms, and I could hear them fighting. Eventually, you just hear somebody was getting hit. Jose had a bathroom in that, a private bathroom in the room. So you could hear water running. And I'm thinking, OK, maybe they're going to take a shower or whatever. But no. He was literally drowning her in the tub, like putting her under. And you could hear her screams being muffled by the water and being put up and then being put back under the water. And I was banging on the door, begging Kate, like, bro, I'm calling the cops. And he's begging me, don't call the cops, bro. Like, you know I got a situation in Georgia, which he did. So I didn't. Big regret. Later that night, she finally came out again, and she, like, picked up her hoodie, and she was marked up with bruises like a Dalmatian, like a bruise behind her ear, behind her neck, literally everywhere. And it was very clear that he was avoiding hitting her face so that she wouldn't have any, like, clear injuries when you were talking to her. I've never seen somebody bruised up so bad. It was just very clear, like, she didn't have nobody. Like, she didn't have any money. She didn't have any family support. So in a situation like that, when people are like, why don't you leave? Why don't you leave? And you really don't, you think that that person is literally your foundation and your network to life. Nobody's understanding of my source of 
happiness in another person, which was a mistake initially, right? But she fell through on every occasion until now, until I started fucking her up. Man. Now she's scared. That girl is scared for her life, which I understand. You know what I've done, people. All of them boys know. She know that. She's seen a shit. So she's scared. She thinks I'm gonna kill her. They all knew what was going on, and they were... What in the fuck? Like, watching him fight men was graphic and, like, made me cringe inside. Him putting his hands on her the way he did them. I have no words. So caught up in his clout and having his respect, they would never go against what he was saying. It was like the weight of that person, it was zero compared to their potential to make it with Jose. So there was just no incentive to step in. You know how you got that little. Okay, loves, we're at the 53 mark. I know, I know, I know. You guys probably wanted this to be one full long video, but I'm sorry, guys, that would have taken forever to edit and upload. I'm gonna split this into two parts. It's really good so far, and like I feel like we haven't even gotten to probably the best parts of this documentary, but I will say like my final thoughts on where we are leaving off is it's a, it's an overall sad situation, no matter how you look at it. But like to see how quickly their love began and like how beautiful it was in the beginning and for it to so quickly shift into this abusive situation and like just seeing how fragile she was and like he said like terrified for her life and the fact that he was so aware like i understand he's bipolar but like i don't it's difficult for me to understand that thought process because he's actively acknowledging what he's doing is damaging her and he understands why it's damaging to her but at the same time he feels like that is how he gets whatever it is he wants out of her, you know, the best parts of her, the best parts of her out. And the only way he can do that is through abusing her. And it's so sad. And like, I guess that's what they were foreshadowing when they were talking about the obsession because I highly doubt, like, it sounds really fucked up, but I feel like he didn't beat her up because he wanted to inflict pain on her. He recognized what that turned her into and like because he was so obsessive and probably jealous and like afraid to lose her it was his way of trying to keep her in any way shape like in any way necessary you know and that's in no way defending what he did or anything I'm just trying to like men I'm just trying to vocally kind of work out his thought process you know that's not defending his actions or saying that that's okay or he should have ever laid a hand on her no not at all i feel terrible for her like terrible for her because she was in such a vulnerable space and she had nobody and when you're bonded like that like yeah i will never judge people who don't immediately leave because you're essentially brainwashed into thinking that this is the only person for you this is the only person who can love you this is the only person who has ever shown you love and what makes you think that you're gonna go in the world and find that in someone else you know like my ex not <clears throat> my ex used to do that for so long um and it just keeps you in this like mental mind fuck of just feeling helpless and like obviously we're seeing the really extreme parts but there had to be some small moments some glimmer of hope you know like where they had a good day or where he was sweet, didn't put his hands on her. And like, I'm sure that instilled in her like, oh, like he really does love me or he really doesn't mean what he does when he's mad or you know what I mean? And she probably justified staying because he wasn't a terrible person, but his mental state at this time was not healthy to be in a relationship. But yeah, guys, that's what I have for part one so far so good i so badly want to just watch the rest of it but i really wanted to mainly get at least the first part up today to honor ex's memory um i can't believe it's been six years truthfully but it only felt fitting to tap into a story a little bit so yeah i'll have part two later this week 
Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for engagement, guys. We're almost at 5,000 subscribers. And thank you all for being here. Thank you for being so engaging in my comments. You guys are always, we're just having many conversations, exchanging opinions, giving me music things, you know, music recommendations. You guys are always, 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 um, what's the word? You guys are always, you know, just teaching me something new, whether it's through correcting something I say on here, which by all means, y'all, I don't ever take offense to y'all critiquing anything. I react to these solely for fun and for entertainment, learning new things about music. Um, but yeah, don't be shy in my comments. Just always keep them respectful and kind. Be kind to each other. I'm a rambling mess, so that's all I have. I will see you guys in my next video.